Hey, it's Alan from Hack Gadgets here. We're going to be checking out the Aberdeen Exhibition Center. What we have going on is the All Energy 2011 conference. Let's go ahead and uh, see what they got for us. Hi, I'm Stuart Dunbar from Siphon and Fusion at the University of Edinburgh and I'd like to present to you our carbon capture and storage unit which has been produced in association with the EPSRC and colleagues of ours at the University of Edinburgh. So to begin with, what we have here is the start of the whole process. We start with our power station. So we've got fossil fuel burning away, turning turbines, generating electricity for our society, which is exactly what we want. Unfortunately, we also get some production of carbon dioxide which goes up into the atmosphere as things currently stand. The majority of scientists believe that this is causing huge damage to our environment, so we need to do something about this in order to make this process of energy generation, energy production, much, much safer for everybody that we have in today's society. So what we're going to do is to produce some sort of filter system, and that's what we have in the centre part. What we have is a material which can hold on to the carbon dioxide which is being produced. And we would have this over in one of the columns to begin with. You can see the blue lights there show the level of carbon dioxide within this column. The rest of the gases are going through and there's nothing coming through the chimney carbon dioxide wise. Unfortunately though, this material has a certain capacity, a certain limit. When it gets that limit, the gases, including carbon dioxide, go through into the chimney part as well. The good thing about this material, this zeolite material, is that not only can it hold on to the carbon dioxide, it can also uh, have the carbon dioxide stripped from it as well. And so what we can do is we can actually change the pressure. Okay? Before it was under pressure, now it's under a vacuum. So what we have is the carbon dioxide being removed from the zeolite material. And this means that we can use this material again and again and again, repeatedly over many, many years. So that's just using one. What I'd like to get going now is a system where we have two of these working side by side. And we'll see it beginning with the left hand side first and then over on the right hand side. Now the zeolite material is incredible. It's only kind of about half a centimetre, maybe a whole centimetre in size, just a little pellet there, but that actually has a surface area about the size of a flip chart sheet of paper. So it's a huge, and in fact in these two columns here we have about five football pitches worth of surface area just in the size of those two uh, columns. And what we can see now is that these two columns are working side by side. So that whilst one is capturing the carbon dioxide, the other one is being cleaned. This process, the sharing of the resource, means that there's no carbon dioxide coming through and going through into our chimney towards the end of our power station. But there is an issue here. We've kind of caught the carbon dioxide and we've kind of got it away from our columns. But what we need to do is put it somewhere. One thing that's being looked at is by storing it underneath the seabed. So these are areas where we used to have fossil fuels, coal, oil and gas in the past. And what we can do is force the carbon dioxide under pressure so that's in a liquid form and put it into these areas where the coal, oil and gas used to be in the past. Now the, the formations, the rock formations that we have there, used to hold other fossil fuels, coal, oil and gas, for many millions of years. So the idea is that hopefully this will hold the carbon dioxide we hope to inject in these areas for thousands, maybe tens of thousands of years. But a lot of work needs, still needs to be done to this. There's different ways of storing this carbon dioxide and there's different ways of uh, capturing the carbon dioxide to begin with. So lots of work needs to be done over the next few decades to ensure that this is going to be a good thing for us to have in today's society. Society.